Hello and welcome back to episode three of KSR's Know Her Name podcast. I'm Grant Grubbs. Uh, I cover Kentucky women's basketball for KSR. My co-host here is Alex White, uh, Kentucky women's basketball analyst. Uh, today we got a lot to discuss. There's been three games since our last podcast. Additionally, about 15 minutes here into the podcast, we're going to be interviewing Maddie Shear, uh, first we're first year Wildcat but actually a junior who transferred in from Oregon. She's been huge this year for Kentucky. She's averaging 10.9 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 4.8 assists a game, uh, which is actually leading the SEC. And to pile on, she's averaging the most blocks for the Wildcats. So she's having an okay year, I'd say. Uh, to close it out, we're going to do some predictions for the upcoming games. But before we get too far down the road, uh, let's jump back and discuss some of the past couple games. So, Alex, what have you thought uh, about the past three games since our last podcast? Um, a lot of positives from the last two games. Um, Auburn obviously did not go the way that, um, I mean, we hope, but honestly how I feel like it should have gone. Um, mm-hmm. That was definitely kind of our game for the taking, I, in my opinion, at least. And, I mean, we did catch them at a bad time. They had just come off their first sec win um a big win over um Ole Miss too which is one of the best teams in the sec um so we kind of caught them at a time where their confidence was at a probably all-time high for that for the sec play at least and um I still feel like we should have got them but um the last two I mean I'm I can't be happier with the effort um that they put in yeah I agree I mean Auburn is a tough one I I was really confident for this team going into that one, uh, you know, it sucks that they fell so short and there were some questionable things there at the end. And I, I, I wrote after that game, you know, I don't see a way up from here for the team, but they've obviously thrown that back in my face with their past two performances. Yeah. I was honestly so worried about the same thing, like just coming off of a loss like that, where it's really a team that not only you should have won, but one of the, one of the teams at the bottom of the SEC along with us at the time. So um, I I was scared too, because I mean, obviously we had already lost to Missouri. So we were going into that game next. Um, wasn't sure what our mindset would be. And then we go p- play the best team in the nation by far, um, who mm-hmm. we also had already lost to. Um, so yeah, that, that game made me really nervous, but um, I love the way they responded against Missouri. I mean, that really wasn't a game from start to finish. And I mean, props to the players for coming out with a vengeance from that. I mean, they definitely avenged that loss, um, loss at Rupp. Yeah. I mean, a week. So I guess it was a week and a half ago now on January 29th, they beat them. It was 77 to 54. I mean, not close. I, I think in my opinion, it was Kentucky women's basketball's by far best performance of the season. Um, they were eight of 15 from beyond the arc. They shot like 53% from the field. I mean, they, they were just fired the whole entire night. Um, yeah. and, and to go back just 30 days before they'd lost by three points to them. I mean, that's a 26 point difference. You, you can't really ask for much more. Absolutely. And I mean, some of the things that kind of jumped out at me there was, I mean, we forced 22 turnovers, which is incredible. Um, I mean, honestly about our average though of what we're forcing but still still a bit I mean that's a lot of turnovers to force and you could tell just by watching like you could see how much they were forcing at the time and that's Um, also a massive step up for SEC play absolutely and yeah and there it looks like they only had one player that even scored in double figures and it was their post player which um is kind of where we struggled defending this season so um I mean, to only have one of their players, though, even get hit double figures is also impressive in itself. For sure. And, you know, we mentioned we always talk about all the guards, but that Missouri win was kind of the start of a resurgence for the Kentucky's bigs. Uh, Nile Everetter had 8.6 rebounds. Adebola at AAA did her thing. Um, you know, that is going to be massive moving forward for this team. And they proceeded to show that against South Carolina as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, I definitely think, um, I mean, I definitely think we use that momentum going into South Carolina because I mean, South Carolina is just so dominant this year and we've already had to face them once we 
played them close for three quarters of the game. So, I mean, I really thought going into that game, I, I mean, I was nervous because I'm like, I know we just came off that Missouri, but I mean, South Carolina, I mean, they have one of the toughest schedules in the country and continue to win these games. So uh, I was nervous. <laughs> It doesn't help when last time you're there three quarters. So maybe there's this hint in Don Staley's mind that I'm going to just blow these people out to show us, show them that, you know, they don't deserve to be on the court with us. But once again, Kentucky was right there through three quarters. Um, They ended up falling uh, 87-69. But that's still an 11-point jump from their last time they played them. So once again, they're showing improvement. Yeah, Yeah, and I think, I mean, honestly – as crazy as this sounds, unless you're one of the top teams in the nation, I think a lot of teams would be happy with it if you keep it within 20 against South Carolina, just because, I mean, they're so big and they're so good. Like, they are just so talented. Um, I mean, they haven't lost, still haven't lost since um, we beat them in SEC play last season. So, um, I mean, I don't know. It's it's That's a big game to um, come out and perform the way that we did. Yeah, and really – you know, people will be like, well, you're gratifying them for losing by 20. But at the end of the day, you have to look at it like you said. Uh, when you look at the stats, before the UConn game, which is South Carolina's most recent win, Kentucky had scored the two most points. It, like, both of their games was the most points a team had scored against them in a regulation game. Um, so you, you got to take wins where you can, you know, you can't expect when they have six foot seven Cardoso, six foot five Boston, you're going to go out there and pull off this upset. You got to keep it realistic. Uh, but you got to take wins where you can, especially against South Carolina. Yeah. And I mean, just to, just like for people who aren't super familiar with South Carolina, just to tell you like how, how overall talent, how much talent they truly have. They literally scored 48 points off off the bench alone. So just their subs scored 48 points in that game. And they had 12 different players that scored points in that game. And that wasn't just from coming in at the end and scoring. I mean, like they had legit 12. But we didn't even play 12 players in the game total. <laughs> uh, so they have 12 players that are able to score. And we can't even, I mean, produce that much on the floor. So um, definitely overmatched. But I thought that we played as as best as you could want against a team like that. For sure. Well, you know, past those two recaps and just looking at general storylines, Alex, um, what what have you kind of seen from this team recently that you think's led to that uptick in play? Um, I definitely think um, something that you kind of mentioned earlier, which is the um, post post play. Um, that's definitely kind of stepped up. And then just how many turnovers we continue to force. Um, I mean, we forced again 18 against South Carolina, which is way over their average. I think they average like 13 turnovers a game. Um, so I mean, we just continue bringing the defensive intensity that you could all you could hope from um, our team, really. Yeah, and the, yeah, specifically, we won the turnover battle against South Carolina, forcing 18 out of them, us only committing 17, uh, which which you just don't see happen. No. Um, I think additionally on top of that, it's been a little bit about three-point shooting, you know, on the other side of the ball. Early on in this season, I mean, I think I think at one point we were like 20% from three. I mean, it was yeah. historically bad. And lately they've been really knocking it down. Over the past two games, they're 14 to 32 from the field. Um, Matty Shear, Robin Ben, they're just on fire right now, which they're going to need that to continue. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, I think their confidence continues to go up as they keep seeing it go through too. Um, I think Robin's been not hesitant to shoot threes all season long, but Maddie at times has been a little hesitant. And I think um, just continuing to see it go through the net has helped her to continue um, taking those shots. For sure. And, you know, it's, it's only easier when you can just stay out there and continue to get your rhythm. Coach elsie has been tightening the rotations lately. And I Russell, I think has only played eight minutes over the past two games. Asia Petty really only got in against South Carolina due to foul trouble. She didn't really play against Missouri. Um, You know, we're, we're starting to see that kind of March lineup form and it's definitely guard reliant, but the guards are, uh, you know, meeting the expectations. Absolutely. Yeah, they definitely they definitely have been um, continuing to exceed their own expectations, too, I think. So um, 
hopefully we can keep with that. And what what has been your kind of thoughts? I know Blair Green late, lately has kind of, um, I mean, I think she's really stepped it up. Um, what's your thoughts on how she's been doing lately? I mean, she's back and then some. You know, she was coming back from the Achilles injury, uh, obviously. And that, that takes time. I think a lot of people want to rush her into it. But Kyra Elsie said all season during press conferences, she, she has to, like, remind Blair that she needs to relax, take some days off. Um, and, and I think maybe taking some of that pressure off has helped Blair finally reach the place she needs to be. She's shooting with absolute confidence right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And just I feel like her offense is kind of also driving her – almost every other component of the game um I feel like she's really just kind of let let it all come to her and yeah like you said I mean I think we're just hitting that point where um she's she's fully back um maybe wasn't there all season but now she's definitely gotten there yeah for sure well uh with all that said unless you have anything else Alex why don't we hop in and talk to one of these Kentucky guards uh Maddie Shear and kind of see her thoughts on the season so far and maybe discuss some other stuff what do you think yeah, let's do it. All right, perfect. Well, welcome, Maddie. Thanks for coming on. Um, just to get things started, so we had Robin on our last episode, and she told us that you were the most competitive on the team and the teammate that she would want next to her during a fight. Um, <laughs> it seems like we almost got to see if the reverse was true in, in that South Carolina game, but um, <laughs> where does that um, kind of competitive competitiveness come from? Oh, geez. I don't know. I bet my mom and dad would find it out about that one, about who gives people <laughs> for that competitive nature. Um, but definitely just kind of raised in a family where sports was a big part of my life. I have an older brother who never took anything easy on me with sports. Uh, so that definitely played into my competitive nature <laughs> for sure, too. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned your parents a little bit there, Maddie, or I think it was last or two games ago. We heard you talk about your dad who sits up in the top of the arena I, I know like halfway through the season you switched from not wearing an under or from wearing an undershirt to not wearing an undershirt is there like superstition in the family is that just you know hoping for good things what is that no I wouldn't say they're superstition I actually say I'm like not a superstitious person which is kind of funny but more the uh the shirt thing was kind of just random um but no yeah my dad has actually always sat away from my mom and sister and grandma the rest of the family like since I was in probably the fourth grade he's just a very you know wants to watch the game quietly and not be bugged you know now that I'm back home you know we, a lot of people we know so it's kind of hard for them to kind of just watch sometimes so <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah so you did come home um obviously being from Kentucky and I remember back in high school, you winning virtually every award possible um, from Miss Kentucky Basketball to Kentucky Gatorade Player of the Year, um, state tournament MVP, all of those awards. Um, how's it feel being back in the state? Oh, it's been so great. I mean, just having being able to have like all my family be able to come to my games and, you know, friends from high school and different people, friends of my parents that are just able to, you know, pop out at a game randomly. I think I've had you know, like somebody at every home game that, you know, I haven't seen in such a long time. So it's just great. Stuff like that is really, you know, such a driving factor of like enjoying being home and, you know, just playing, being able to play for my hometown is, it, it's such a great feeling. So. Yeah. And Maddie, there were like rumors and talk of you coming to Kentucky for so long. Was there an actually like decisive moment that you knew you were coming to UK? Um, I definitely knew I wanted to come home after I put my name in the transfer portal um but you know just having conversations with uh coach LZ like as I was in the portal I feel like I kind of knew in my heart pretty early on I was like okay I, I think I know Kentucky is the place for me so but I wouldn't say there was like a definitive moment that was like oh I'm gonna go here but more so just more conversations with coach LZ and really you know her believing in me and I'm really, you know, buying into her and what she's got this program uh, looking like. So, yeah. So what would you say was the biggest kind of like adjustment going from Pac-12 to the SEC? Um, definitely the athleticism at the guard position is definitely the main difference that I would say in the Pac-12 and the 
SEC. I was, you know, at Oregon, my main job was like, uh, one of my main jobs was to just lock up the best guard on the other team. And it's funny because now I have someone like Jada Walker, who it's like, you know, there's tons of girls who are way more athletic and quick, quicker than me, who, you know, Jada has that job now. So I think it's just interesting to see that it's kind of, that was kind of that way across the whole league. So. Um, you know, another kind of difference I'm sure uh, at Kentucky is all these weird kind of interesting team building things you all do with boxing lessons and smashing rooms. I don't know. But uh, what have you all thought of those? Do you kind of look forward to them now? And is there any particular moments where you feel like you've actually bonded as a team because of those? Oh, for sure. There have been many times where we've really bonded as a team because of them. And, you know, that's with 10 new girls, that's a really important thing to, you know, try and make happen. And I think Coach LZ and, you know, Kentucky really has a cool way of doing that. Um, but that that is a different uh, part to the transfer. I know I went to Oregon, it was kind of COVID. So, you know, we were restricted by a bunch of rules and stuff like that. But so, so it's new for me anyway, to even the class stuff, just being a regular student athlete is really new for me this year. So, it, but it's been a great, uh, great process. So. And then another kind of adjustment lately, um, I mean, going back to high school, even I remember you being like an elite scorer, but like it always seemed like you were almost a pass first kind of player. Um, lately, you've had to take on like a really big scoring role as well, um, also racking up the assists. But um, has that been kind of like a hard adjustment? Obviously, you've had that in you, but has that been hard to kind of get yourself to shoot a lot more, take a lot more shots? I will say, I mean, since I've been playing basketball, that's kind of been my biggest thing is like you said I'm kind of just a pass first mindset type of person so you know I've heard my whole life you need to shoot more and you know it is adjustment for me trying to you know keep remembering to stay aggressive and keep shooting but you know kind of like in high school like I can and that's what the team needs for me then I'm going to do that so yeah you know coach Elsie actually a few games back said kind of like I think she said the moment she told you to stop worrying so much about scoring seemed like when you kind of had this offensive explosion was that coincidence or did you feel like this kind of weight was lifted off your shoulders yeah I think there was definitely that pressure of like you know we had had conversations and you know we started getting to SEC play uh competition started getting harder and you know in the beginning it's not like I need to be you needed to be shooting 15 shots a game and making half of them but uh, you know, kind of that pressure just kind of built up. And I'm like, gosh, like I need to get, be able to get into a rhythm. Yeah. And, you know, me and Coach Elsie had that talk and she's like, you, like, you don't have to worry about it. Like it's, it's, it's going to come. And then I think this, maybe the South Carolina game or LSU game was kind of after that. And then it was kind of just from there, just everything kind of fell into place, you know, shots start falling eventually. So. Absolutely. And so we'll wrap it up here soon. I think Grant has some quick hitters after this, but just last final, like real question. Um, I know there's a ton of middle school and high school kids in Kentucky that really look up to you as a player. Um, what's like a piece of advice you would give to some of those young players that maybe want to play at the next level? I think the main thing I would say is just to believe in yourself. You got to be the first person to be like, Hey, I'm the best player on this court. And I think the most successful players go in with that mindset and the mental side of the game is just as important as, you know, your capabilities on the floor. So. Well, Maddie, I guess just to wrap it up here, we'll do some kind of quick four or five rapid fire questions and uh, hopefully you can rattle them back here at us. So uh, the first one to do is which teammate on the team do you text the most? That would probably be Kennedy. She texts me a lot. So that's kind of <laughs> she's a chatter, maybe a one way so. interaction there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. The second question is who is your funniest coach? Funniest coach, uh, Coach Amber. <laughs> I, she, every time I look at her, she's always making me laugh. So. <laughs> would you rather have a 6 a.m. practice or a 9 p.m. practice? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. 9 p.m. I am not a morning person. <laughs> uh, who is the toughest one-on-one -on -one player to guard on your team during practices? Um, one-on-one. -on -one. Probably say Jada. Those little quick guards, man. <laughs> and the final question is, uh, if you had to describe your game using one word, what would you use? 
Um, fiery. <laughs> A great answer um well i think that's alex unless you have anything else i think that's all we have yeah i think that's it thank you so much for coming on yeah thanks yeah, thank you guys. do it again sometime we appreciate it for sure yeah of course thanks for having me yeah have a great day thanks you too all right thank you guys for uh joining us back here and hopefully you enjoyed that interview with a little bit of insight from maddie Shear. uh now we're going to look into kentucky's next two games um you know on thursday they're taking on alabama which is a big one right ox yeah absolutely one of the top teams in the conference yeah alabama is uh six and four in conference play and they're actually fifth in the conference um but you know that's not that far off they've Kentucky's competed with teams better than that. And even Missouri uh, is kind of right in that type of area. So it's not a crazy contest. It's not like you're facing number one or number two LSU. I mean, it's Absolutely. very winnable. Yeah. They're, I mean, they, yeah, their record is a lot better than us in SEC play. But if you really look into it, I mean, three of their losses are from the top three teams in the conference in South Carolina, LSU, and Tennessee. And then their other one is to Missouri. So, I mean, that's a team that we just came out and dominated. So as despite them being at the top and um, their record being as good as it is, I definitely think that that is a, definitely a winnable game for us, um, depending on how we come out and play. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would predict, I mean, in Memorial, I could very well see us winning by four or five points. I, I think it's going to be a close one. But with the way the team's playing right now, I can see them winning. Um, I think it's going to be key. Uh, it's just getting those turnovers, like you mentioned earlier. If they can get out and get that energy going in Memorial Coliseum, I think they pull this one out um, with relative comfort. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I definitely think I think that probably five mark is about where I would put it to um, four or five points. Um, mm -hmm. I think it will be pretty close and I could even see it being kind of a game of runs where they go on a run. We hopefully respond with the runs, that sort of thing. Um, but I mean, definitely, I feel like the momentum that we have going into this game, um, I feel like it's on our side, um, honestly, going into it. For sure. Uh, and then obviously following that, they have Ole Miss, uh, who, who's another similar but even better opponent. They're eight and three in conference play, fourth in the conference, coming just behind Tennessee. Uh, you know, th this is honestly, I feel like, a perfect time for Kentucky to have these matchups. They're two teams who aren't on that upper echelon, but they are very talented. And if Kentucky can pick these wins up, it's exactly the steam they're going to need going into March. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think I think this these kind of teams are having the conference start that we were kind of hoping that we would have. Um, and but they're very I mean, both of them are winnable despite them being at the top. Both of them are winnable. And if we can get Alabama, then that was actually that's one of Ole Miss's losses. So I think we'll have some confidence going into that if we can get Alabama, um, just knowing that they already beat this old, same Ole Miss team. Um, so definitely For two sure. tough ones, but winnable games. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and the other team, one of the other teams that uh, Ole Miss lost to was Auburn, so, which we lost yes. to by three points in one of our worst games of the season. So I think Absolutely. there's no reason for Kentucky to lack confidence going into these games. Um, you know, especially they've had a week off from their last contest to their upcoming contest against Alabama. Hopefully they've kind of taken that time to tie all the loose ends together. Absolutely. And I feel like – I feel like – I feel like Kyra Elzey probably has been getting us well prepared for these games um, just based on some of the stuff that um, we've kind of seen put out there. And then after talking with Maddie, um, just hearing her talk about the team chemistry as a whole and how that really hasn't, I mean, it doesn't seem like that's um, a problem at all, which at this mm -hmm. point in the season, you do sometimes see that with teams um, kind of imploded with internally. Um, so I mm -hmm. definitely think, hopefully that we're we're trending in the right direction where some of these other teams may not be for sure yeah i mean the mantra you've heard over and over from lz during these preference conferences and players is refuse to lose um and over the past two games i think that attitude's kind of spread uh and it, it's exactly what they need as their season kind of dwindles down here yes i couldn't agree more well, Alex, unless you have anything else, uh, I guess we can wrap it up here. 
yeah, no, I am. That is all I got. All right. Well, you know, obviously tune into the upcoming games for Kentucky women's basketball as their season comes to a close and it's a narrow race for those SEC seeds. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We want to give a special shout out to Tanya Went of Rise Up Sports Media. Uh, you know, she's out here giving us the know her name uh, title and we're happy to have it. So thank you all for listening and, uh, you know, we'll see you next time.